The Football Pod on Off The Ball in partnership with AIB. Proud sponsors of the Football Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships. Hashtag the toughest. Hello there and you're very welcome back to the Football Pod with Paddy Anders and James O'Donoghue. There you have it, the 2024 Allianz National Football Leagues are over. Well, the regular ah. part of it. We've got the finals at the weekend. It's only getting there now. Good yeah, finals. Don't, don't Good finals up. as well. Looking forward to this weekend, I must say. The weather is going to start getting better. We're going to be straight into championship. No. It's I'm not relying little... on the weather, T. Never rely on the weather. It's shit again. It's getting Do worse. I, busy weekend this weekend. I had a double header on, on Saturday in Porky Cueve. I had Limerick with Kenny in the hurling and then Cork Armand in the football. And Sunday I was obviously following a lot of it, same as yourselves. Funny, Kieran McGinney was in great form after the Armagh Cork game. And yes. He has a little bone to pick with ex-players. Oh. Now, I made the mistake of... For being negative. Not asking them which X players were negative. So it's not I, want, I want to start the pod by asking James Dunn who what he made of the 2024 National Football League. Loved it. <laughs> uh, oh, absolutely <laughs> fantastic viewing. I loved every second of it. Nothing to fault. Right, James, this is safe space. James is afraid <laughs> of the game. not listening to this pod. <laughs> yeah, no, I, um, I thought this year's National League was disappointing. All right, so far. Like the league, the, the league finals can kind of make up for a lot, but there wasn't that much drama, especially Division One. I think the quality was down a bit, and I suppose from an All Ireland contender's point of view, it looks like Dublin are streets ahead of everyone, which I suppose is a bit demoralising when you're looking at the at the kind of the path going forward for everyone. It's like Dublin are going to be so hard to get at. So I, I do think the quality was down. Maybe though, with the structure last year, the change, managers realise, right, maybe the league does have to be taken with a pinch of salt. We can kind of use more players, take it a bit easier. We're not going gung-ho at it and prepare better for championship. I think they might have learned from last year. But in terms of a spectacle, I, I don't think it was as good a product or as quality as it was last year this year. What do you reckon, Paddy? I, I, I think there's a bit in that with teams. This is only the second year of this structure coming in, and teams are still figuring it out. Definitely, like you look. Well, if you're a manager of an intercounty team going into this season, you, you'd look at last season and go, well, "Who navigated the this really condensed schedule well?" And if you remember this time last year, we had Galway and Mayo in an all Connacht league final, and they were blitzing everyone. They were brilliant. Uh, Galway off the back of their all Ireland final. Uh, the year before, McStay had gone into Mayo and they played scintillating football. There was a great story in the National League last year. Um, Kerry weren't really doing that. And Dublin and Derry were in Division 2. So, look at what happened then. Mayo lost in the Championship a week later. And yeah, they, they bet Kerry in the, the group stages, but their season never really... Did they really recover after losing that initial game to, to, to Ross Common in the Connacht Championship? And Galway had a complete... Fucking disaster with the championship in terms of that that last group game against their ma, they got caught and then they fell, ended up playing Mayo the next week in the championship and getting knocked out. So, so there's definitely an element of teams still trying to figure out what's the best way to navigate this new structure because it is full on. And we've seen, even from the weekend, a lot of managers commenting, Colin O'Rourke, Jim McGuinness, guys get injured. to get like It's relentless games. Um, and then championship is two weeks away. So, so there, I think that definitely has a role in it. I, I agree with James. There's we were chatting just before we came on. There's not many stories from this match. Like if you look back and go, I think the league finals will be good. I hope. I, I think teams will take a series. The matchups look really, really good. Um, this weekend in Crow Park, but like the biggest stories from from the league this year, Dublin going really well. Is that is that news? Is that is that when a great think, story? Does that capture the imagination of the public? Probably not. Well, I think so. how well how well they're going is probably. And I, I wonder was the fact that Dublin in Division Two last year allowed a couple of other teams. Well, that was a story. Like, that was like, a story. Roscommon, 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 Roscommon Derry beat them last year. They were third. Ross Common nearly got into the league final. Mayo the Renaissance under Max Day. That was a big story. Um, Armagh getting relegated. I, I just felt like there was more happening in last year's league um, than, than there has been this year. Like, like if you would actually look, our predictions have come out reasonably well since the start. You got Mayo are. We've Down on Westmead in Division 3, Leash, Leash and Leitrim in Division 4. I know Leitrim, it's a great story, but Wexham might have something else to say about that. Uh, Division 2, we said our man would definitely get back up. 
Donegal is Donegal is a big story. Their renaissance under McGuinness. We probably just haven't seen enough of it. That's why I'm looking forward to their game on Sunday against Armagh and Crow Park. But I, I think the biggest stories throughout the whole National League is probably Kildare losing all seven games. Mm. Um, and maybe Donegal getting a bit of a bounce out of McGuinness. But other than that, I feel like it has been a bit flat. You know, and that's... Yeah, I Can, the league finals could I agree, could save it this weekend. I think there's brilliant games if all the teams are, are kind of added and taken seriously in the way the structure works. They all have a little gap before they play championship. So I I think we'll see pretty strong teams, hopefully, which the leagues deserve. You know, you want it for the credibility of the competition, and I think we'll see that on Saturday and Sunday. So if we have four brilliant games in Crow Park this weekend, that'll be a great finale to it. But I think the the group stages so far in 2024 I don't think they really caught fire I, I can't remember what were the brilliant games you know yeah I have a bit of a that's I have a bit of a theory on that I don't think it was a bad league I feel like it was a strange league uh, there was there was days that were good are you talking was, division one are you talking across the board I think across the board Jim. yeah I think there, there was weekends that was like bang we're back Mm. There's good stuff happening here. Or there was matches that were sporadically actually very entertaining or good. And you're thinking, okay, there's something here. But then there was weekends where managers were pulling up the handbrake. Mm -hmm. Or Mm. they were clearly saying, we're happy with our lot if we're in the middle of the table. Like, I'll give you Mead as an example. Colm O'Rourke, all he cared about was safety. He didn't matter if they finished sixth or they finished third. Yeah. Like, and once they were safe... He was making changes. Uh, McGuinness is obviously building something new there. I wonder, does he regret not wrapping that? That was a surprise, wasn't it? Well, and cotton, and cotton what? Like, that was a surprise. Yeah. I just thought that was odd. And look, look, it's unlucky. Players are going to pick up knocks at different stages. But two of their marquee guys, with experienced guys, with a lot of miles on the clock, and they were, they were already in. It was just a surprise. They were already in the league final. It was a surprising one that you take the risk of it. And it's disappointing because, like, Again, from the neutral perspective, you're you're, you're not going to see Paddy McBearty and Ryan McHugh this weekend, who are obviously yeah. integral to Donegal. And I was looking forward to seeing that Donegal Armagh game, like I say, the two standout teams in Division Two by a mile. You know, so it's disappointing for everyone, but but they, or most certainly for Jim McGuinness and Jerry's looking at going, fuck, well, <laughs> you know, was there a need to play in that game? Those players. Mm. Do you know what I always find as well? It's when you're kind of you're trying not to get injured that you oh, can yeah. guarantee. You're not going flat to the mat. It's like there's a challenge to go into and you, you're thinking, I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> Guaranteed you're going to come out of it because you're not going full at it. So, like, mm. if you're... if I, I don't really agree with, like, bringing players on with 20 minutes to go if you're giving them the rest. If you're giving them a rest, just leave them off the panel altogether and don't Wasn't risk that, uh, anything. With, with Kerry, Kerry yesterday, Jimmy, bringing That's what I was getting. The they, they brought on the two clippers. Like, I was like, why? They were winning the game. Uh, uh, they were comfortably winning now. I know God would get a goal laid on, but again, I was surprised to see see the two boys coming out. I was. The well, there was no need. There was no. Boy, there was no need. Like, but I suppose yeah. it was a home game, last league game. Maybe, maybe you know you want to give the supporters what they want. They do come out to see David, yeah, like maybe. so. It, well, yeah. look, it. There was some cheer when you had the the trio of Graham O'Sullivan, Potty, and David all coming Graham out. Graham O'Sullivan must have been delighted. He'll never get a fu- he'll never get a fucking reaction like that ever again. Like <laughs> he was clapping and everything coming on. He, uh, he was doing the soccer. Thanks, lads. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. As it happened, and that game was in the melting pot, I was like, oof, power play by Kerry. And then I looked at the Scorpio app and the dubs were smashed and thrown by 18 points. That, like, I just think, look, at, it's been said about the likes of a Kilkenny and Hurling, right? Their ceiling, they, they can always hit. Their base level is never very low, Kilkenny. Tyrone's ceiling can be very high, but yeah. Jesus Christ, their base level can be very low. Sir, consistency. Yeah. All through this league. Broken record on this show. Um, that was the latest example of it. Now, look, they, again, it wasn't their full deck, obviously. Their best player was being arrested. Um, they have a couple of guys getting minutes. Obviously, Colin McShane and these guys, but... Same Brian Dewar. Brian Dewar was what's he say? Disappointed. After, no, you know, embarrassing. Or embarrassed. 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 I say it was just like, yeah, that, it's not good. It's not good for them. You know, Tyrone going into the game, we're kind of going, look, we could have take our leave a win. A win would be great, but we're not overly pushed about it. Let's just get minutes in the legs, and that's a fine. Like I say, there's lots of teams who would have had that approach, who were in the middle of the road in the four divisions, going into the final weekend, but then losing the game in that manner is that that doesn't that doesn't no good. 
you know, it was a, it was a bad well, day at the office do, for them. Does it do no good, James? Because... Are you trying to put a positive spin? You're going, you're going to go back to 2021. Point to face. No, I'm not going back to 2021. I'm going to the fact that there's a, a clatter of young players there that are getting exposure in the league, and Toronto have had good individual moments, but I'm not sure they have any concept of what a real Ulster Championship battle is like. And I don't know if you're getting knocked down a peg or two. Maybe that destroys your confidence, or maybe it's like, oh Jesus, you know, we aren't in the in the place that we thought we were in the middle of the league. Yeah, I, d- I can't see any benefit coming from getting that dusting. Though. Like, I know what you mean in terms it's bad, of... It's a bad you're, thing, get, like. you're getting a bit of an eye-opener. I'm a bit off mm-hmm. it here. Where do we need to be? This was an all-merciful battery. But, like, I, I just saw the, the goals were, were atrocious. I mean, mm-hmm. I just went, went through them here. The first goal, the ball was kicked down the line to Fenton. Right? Do you remember the first goal? Mm-hmm. He sauntered over yeah, into yeah. the right corner for our position, right? He could look up. He could have taken a hop if he wanted and he kicked it across to Khan who was also going at half pace and slipped it to, to Pascal to finish. It was like a game in slow motion in front of the goals. And in the second one, they had a three on one on the keeper, Khan, Scully and Lehif. It was like, it was, it was like there was no effort at all going in. So I don't know how to read into it with Tyrone because they have, they, have, <laughs> they have previous with this of throwing their arse at the last league game Probably gone a few points that night and then coming back and doing great things at Championship and having a couple of results in them because they did it in Killarney where they conceded 6 15, scored 1 14 in the last league game and went on, beat Kerry in the All Ireland semi final in 21 and won the All Ireland. So, like, they, they can do that, but you're right about their ceiling and their bottom. They're, they're so up and down, but like the goals that's, that went in the last that, day that, that, were, that's were shocking. The issue with them. That, that's been the issue with them, like, like we said it maybe. Every week on this show, but a couple of weeks ago, yeah. if they've all their players, there's no injuries, and all their players are performing well, and they have that nasty bit of edge in the throne, and you're right, Jimmy, it's the, just looking at the goals yesterday, it just didn't look right again. It was like this is like yeah, training drills. I anyway. actually, I actually was, was so, so half laughing. The, 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 Toronto yeah. never, they're not going to be that bad again, particularly once they get into the championship. But but Toronto playing the Ulster Championship in a couple of weeks' time, you have no idea what they're going to perform like. And that's... that's. I bet you they'll play that, well. That's not, I, that's, yeah, it, I, but you I mean, they, they could can. as easily play diabolically bad. And, and if you're a coach or you're a supporter of that team, that's not a good place to be. You like to have some sort of semblance going. Even at our worst, we have a, a baseline we're going to perform at. Um, but but like, they're, and they're not the only team in this, this bracket. I, I would put... I would put the Connacht teams, all three of them, would Galway you? have uh, Galway have a bit of an excuse in terms of like Galway. Parrot Joyce alluded to it after, after the game yesterday. You know, Sean Kelly's their centre back. McDade's their centre f- or uh, mid- midfielder. Um, Shane Walsh is centre forward and Comer full forward. That's their four best players along with Paul Connery, and they've missed basically the whole league. Not not, not just their best players, but just just leaders in the team. And, and it, it's hard Galway. It's just been very difficult to read on them at all. But I think even with those guys, there's a, a there's a question mark on Galway, Mayo, Ross Common on their day. Yeah, they could they could all take out one of the top teams. They could all take out each other. But we're talking about winning seven, eight games to win the All Ireland. I, I just don't see the consistency in any of those teams. And Tyrone are probably the worst culprits of that. Yeah, I think I Ross Common are a level below. All those other teams, I would say, right? I agree that yeah, Galway and Mayo... Not, not far off Galway and Mayo, but the, yeah, I would say slightly below. In terms right? of championship game, they're probably just, just a little below, right? Yeah. I think that you're right about the Mayo and Galway and Tyrone all have a, a big result in them, right? But th- they would never... Mayo and Galway would never get that dusting. They'd never throw their arse at it like Tyrone did. Like, I, I'm surprised <laughs> that, that Tyrone did that. I don't see the benefit, even in terms of... And you kind of see it with, with crowd numbers and kind of the relationship teams have with their supporters, results like that are good for nobody. They don't mm. bind the team with the supporters. They don't get a good attitude in the county. You know, it, it just turns everything a little bit negative, and that's going to that's gonna hang over them for a few weeks. I have a like, we, even if, we, we before spoke, that, Just it, on that, and you're saying Mayo, Jimmy, Mayo played Kerry in the league final a couple of years ago, and we had James Horn on this show talking about it, and it was unlike Mayo got a, mm. a bad beating. And they're kind of true to right. They were playing Connacht Championship a couple of weeks later. 
I, I think they were genuinely just bait out the gate that day, though. I, 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 the, the, my seeing the Dublin goals the last day, that wasn't mm-hmm. Tyrone operating a full, full tilt. But Do you know what I mean? James, would Dublin have done that at the weekend to half the teams in Division 1? In Dublin form, are frightening. At the moment, they are unbelievable. The shape the Pascal looks in. He looked like oh. a man amongst boys yesterday. For, for one of the goals where he goes around, his man and slips it. I think he's, he's always, he's a, he is a brilliant athlete. Always he athlete. is looking but, in serious but, shape. I think they would have probably given most teams a bit of a hiding, but nothing like that. Six, five or six goals. Once the, you start getting up to those numbers, it yeah. is embarrassing. Do her's right. But if you go back, right, go back to the 2021 game uh, against Kerry, right? And we say that if Tyrone have everyone, 6-15 they conceded against Kerry that day, right? L- listen to this for her team. Morgan, Monroe, Rona McNamee, Podrick Hempsey, McKernan, Peter Hart, Rafferty, Matty Donnelly, Frank Burns, Kieran McGeary, Derek Hennevin, Connor Myler, <laughs> Darren McGurry, Connor McKenna, Paul Donny. It genuinely a full team. And they got they just didn't they just didn't come with, with everything. There must so, be twelve players to start the semi final in the All Ireland and a few weeks later again. Won the All Ireland. One the other, and like it, I don't know. I don't think any other team can go from that low to that high. <laughs> it's just, it's who do, just they, who do they play in the Ulster Championship, Tommy? And I haven't seen some Derry Dunny goal. Same side of the draw as Derry Dunny goal. Yeah. Did they, so they played a winner of that game. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, it? So uh... look, it's you don't know. You, Sorry, you honestly, do not know. What Toronto is going to throw up. I, I don't have massive confidence in them because I, I just think play, the one thing they are consistent in is being inconsistent over the last two years. The winners of so. Monaghan Cavan, and they're on the same. They're, they're all on the same side as Derry Donegal. So Derry Donegal is the quarter final. Monaghan Cavan is a preliminary round game in Ulster, and Tyrone play the winners of Monaghan mm-hmm. Cavan. So Monaghan and Cavan will be licking their lips. Whoever comes through that one, that'd be a good game as well. Yeah. You see, that's another downside of getting uh, a beating like that is that it gives the team you're going to be playing hope rather than putting down a marker and. Having a bit of fear factor, you know, there's question marks over you, and it's given everyone else time to prep your demise. How but Dublin are the opposite. Dublin, honestly. There's, there's a confidence in their play, Jimmy, isn't there? I hope they got you, you Derry. mentioned it there. Go on. Right, no, I, I think it'll be a good game on Sunday now. I don't, I, I don't think Dublin will be getting overly carried away with that result. Dublin have been playing well in the last month. Definitely they won five games in the Spain. It's a good game for them to get another game against Derry because look, the reality is the Leinster Championship isn't isn't going to be overly competitive. That's just the nature of it. So, so another game is good, and it's against one of the top teams, uh, and and who are genuine All Ireland contenders. So I'm interested to see what Derry's approach is. I thought Dublin managed the game up in Celtic Park uh, last month really, really well, and kind of kept Derry at arm's length. It was a really mature performance. What what's Mickey Hart's approach to this? At the weekend, is there anything new? Will they even want to show their hand? This is the type of shite that goes on. I'd love to just see both teams just go at it, each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think with the benefit, benefit of Dublin, we mentioned it last week briefly. There's Yes, their main players are playing really well. You know, Kilkenny, Khan, Fenton, these guys. That's great seeing them back at the level. But it's the guys like Pascal. Pascal won a first All-Star last year. Mm. The confidence, you can see it in their play. Lorcan O'Dell. Scully back at his best. Bugler. Ross McGarry. These guys who are younger guys. Kim Murphy. Played every minute for Dublin. And they're not the main established guys. They weren't there through the whole Jim Gavin era and things like that. And their initial time on the Dublin team was under pressure. Losing. Losing the Mayo and the Oller in semi final, Losing the Kerry. Having that bit of heartache and you're kind of questioning, doubting yourself. And then you go and win the All-Ireland. Winning the All-Ireland gives just a confidence yeah, to the more established guys. But for those newer guys, you can see it in their play. You can see it's just, they all feel they belong there. Pascal's the obvious example. He's now one of the top forwards in the country. You know, and I played with Cody when he was younger, in and out of the team. You know, you're second guessing yourself. You know, oh, do I belong here? Am I good enough to this? And you, kind of, you can see the hesitation in their play. When you see him yesterday, he's going, yeah, I'm one of the top forwards in the country. Of course I'm going to do this. Oh, yeah. There's a confidence in their play. And that's been the striking thing with Dublin over the last the last month. But I look forward to seeing the challenge against Derry at the weekend and kind of carry that on again. Because like the, the game yesterday was a bit of a, like yeah. I say, Tyrone, Tyrone weren't anywhere near what they should be operating at. Just linger with me, you stay with me for a second. I've already done a bit of stretching already in the pod. I'm going to do a bit more here. The league final is the 31st of March. 
Last year's All Ireland quarter finals took place on the first of July. Is it too okay. early for Dublin to be motoring this well? Well, Dublin used I think Dublin have used thirty three players this league. Like it's not like they flogged their first fifteen and got them to this level and now it's downhill from here. If anything, it's their kind of middling players have stepped up and their kind of lesser lights have stepped up. And now the more senior players like Basquiat and these fellas are coming back into the team to kick them on another gear. So I don't think they've, yeah. I don't think they've gone too early. Now, again, we don't have enough of a timeline of this championship over the years to actually know is it too early. But I think Dublin yeah. has so many quality players. It's interesting you mentioned the stats there. There's a, a Twitter account. I've actually just figured out how to pronounce it. It's pseudonym but it's T-S-U-D-H-O-N-I-M. They have a Mayo crest, but they've put together some stats on the players that have been used in the championship this year. You said Dublin have used 33 players. They haven't Car- used the Kerry most. Kerry 32? In the league. Kerry 32. Yeah. Kerry have used the most. Galway, Galway 27. Galway probably had to. James, you're doing well here. Here, Jimmy, you're, you're literally most, reading that Twitter account. I can no. see your eyes May- darting off screen. Now. Mayo 29? <laughs> no, no, you just threw that in for the crack. Mayo used the most in the league, 36 players. So hey, 36, maybe, well. maybe Mayo learned from last year. But they did the same last year. It didn't didn't Well, work they, they won the league. But I think it's spread. I know, but the Holy Grail. Bit more. But just a note on Derry. Yes. Like, their rise to this is unreal when you think unreal. about it. Like, they were in the Division 4 final in what, 2019? Mm. Yeah, the bet Leitrim against Leitrim, and, and that wasn't oh God, one sided game either. That was that was a close game. I think it was three or four points they won by. Beat Offaly in Division Three final two years later. Yeah. Now in Division One final, like and operating at such a high level with players you'd love to have in your side, proper leaders, skillful players, athletes, yeah. like but their team that you can only you I, can I, only I, praise. I, this is what like I'm not just being you know playing things out. I think they will ask serious questions at Dublin on Sunday. Like Lachlan Murray, like, like Derry were at a, at a point and Mickey Hart has come in and go, what do they need to do? They need to be more aggressive in their attack. You know, remember they, they turn over teams, great through, great hard, and then we, they'd slow down and wait for everyone to get into structure and it wasn't hurting teams enough. Um, they kind of got rid of that. It's, it's all out, out of attack when they turn teams over. Very similar mm-hmm. to what McGuinness is doing at Donegal, Conor McCluskey. He scored three goals from the full back line as an example of that. Lachlan Murray, Cormac Murphy, other forwards to take that burden off with Wigan. That's the most common kind of thing. They've done that. They've done that. That's what I'm saying. That's their answering questions, which are the most common challenges that were thrown at them. And it takes the pressure off. Ethan Ethan Doherty, he probably was never really a scorer, but a really influential player for them. Hmm. Um, Cassidy at half forward will always have three or four shots a game. So, So a lot of the they were doing so much right and getting to a point being the dominant team in Ulster but falling short in, in all our semi-finals and it seems like they've improved again so I that's why I, I, I'm intrigued to see their approach on Sunday I think they will ask they have weapons that will ask questions of Dublin uh, that's why I think it's a great game for Dublin to get as well um, yeah. yeah I think I think it's a great um, indicator for Derry They'll use it as, I think they'll use it as flat to the mat, come up short by four or five points if, if, if that's what happens, two or three points, I don't need any more than that. And then they know exactly where they are going into the championship because those games, you need to use those games to give everyone belief as well in the camp that we can challenge Dublin because at the moment there is, there is that fear of there's Dublin a, because they're just so good. There's it's, an aura back. There's such an aura. Right? Honestly, there's yeah. such an aura. And, and that was gone. It's for all two over years, the country. Like. Yeah, it's all over the country. It's mm. a case of we're going well, but Jesus, Dublin are are at a different level at the moment. Beautiful, so if isn't it? Derry, if Derry can, for their own sake, just get one in uh, they could win it, for, but just get one in two or three points. And <laughs> then they say they have a full knowledge of where they are, what they need to improve for that all Ireland semi final if the draw comes out the way they think it will. It's semi final against Dublin, and that's their time then. But like they have to use the weekend as a marker. There's no point in in resting fellas or they have to go for this weekend, I think. It's way more important for Derry than Dublin. But they've three Paddy. weeks till they play Donegal, aren't they? They're twenty yeah. first twenty first of April is that kid. And they've won two ultra titles in a row. Twenty second. I think 
laying that marker down at the weekend is is very important. Paddy, Owen Sheehan asked me this morning on Off Ball Breakfast, when was the last time Dublin have played as well as they've played recently? What would you say? Well, um, I think they're very good in the second half of the quarter final against Mayo last year. And before that, probably in the 2019 season, the five in a row season. I went back to what did you say, Tom? You obviously had an answer. It's not the answer it. you had, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Try it, again, Patty, because Tom, yeah. Tom, he's going to keep Sorry, on until send, you get the answer right. Send me, the, send me the clip. <laughs> Who did Dublin meet the semi final? Who did Dublin meet the oh, semi final yeah. last year? So there are two semi finals: Mayo in nineteen and Tyrone in seventeen. But I went back to August thirty first, twenty fourteen, and three fifty five p.m. Dublin are nine points to four up against Donegal, and they butchered two goal chances. And then it all. That's through. the last time Dublin played well. I'm only joking. As well, as well, as well. No, there was a touch of a hyperbole there this morning. But uh, that, yeah. that semi final in 19, that second half against Mayo, you were absolutely off the charts that day. Oh, yeah. Khan goes on the burst. Yeah. Was that when yeah. he was marking Keegan? Yeah, two he goals. gets the two goals at yeah. the second half. Because um, we're shite in the first half. Um, no, yeah. it's. But you can't like, really compare. Yeah, no, and that's that's and we're, we're not comparing, them. and that's what yeah. I think Desi Farrell has over the last four years, and those newer players that we've mentioned. That's it's a new Dublin team. It's brilliant from a Dublin perspective, um, that they're being being spoken about about reaching those levels again. But it is fucking March, and I mm. know without a doubt you're asking are Dublin peaking too soon. No, they are totally understand where they're at. They still have. The you know I know people are asking we haven't seen Cluxton McCarthy well, a couple, couple of months exactly so those guys Paul Mannion and these fellas and Pascal is only kind of just back into the team as well so I expect Dublin to get better but I expect everyone else to get better as well like like yeah. I know because we're in the league and we were guilt we were guilty of this last year we were talking about is our Mayo going to go and do this thing now we do put a lot of emphasis on it because we're in it for the last two months and it's been kind of full on. Every team is going to get better coming into the yeah. Every single team. Even Kildare. And you think, oh, it's lost hope. It's ah, a new on. break. They, well, so, they, can't get any, they can't get any fucking worse. So, I'll, uh, well, But no, I, I, that's why I, I think th- yeah. this weekend is important. They'll be good games. But it will go up another level across the board come church. Sure. So, Saturday night, the Division 2 games were wrapped up. And Loud got the job done against Kildare. They bet them by a goal. Fermanagh did what they had to do and they bet Cavan, but it wasn't yeah. enough. Loud stayed up, so Fermanagh and Kildare went down. Donegal and Armagh, we already knew they were in the league final. Cork kind of solidified their place in... Cork are scoring Salam. a lot, T. Talk me through that. You were there on Saturday night. I was talking to John Cleary about this as well. And yeah. I asked him about it. I kind of put it to him, James. Do you remember the conversations we were having last year and you were talking about the lack of Cork? Yeah. Yeah, the the firepower. Yeah, they flipped kickers. it on Talk his head. Talk to us, it. Yeah, and I put it's that to Cleary. I said, are you I've working on I've seen the scores. Yeah, yeah, go on. And Cleary said, and? yes. And it kind of screwed us over a little bit at the start of the league. We were too putting too much of an emphasis on attacking and getting more players up the field and more players in shooting positions that we got caught in the break in the first two games. So we're mm, trying to right. bring a bit more balance to it. I thought it was quite refreshing the way he said... There's no point. We could set up defensively if you wanted to. But to get to where we want to get to, and we're on a journey to get there, we're never going to get as far as we can. John Cleary's been listening to the pod. He's been listening to the lads. How long are we beating that drum? Attack. Cleary's, Cleary's a forward, boys. He's a forward. He's a man who knows oh, how to do it. He's done it a lot. You need a forward in every yeah. management team. I, mm. I agree. So, but the thing about Cork is Cork traditionally have unbelievable kickers that's why it was so mm. kind of strange to see them hey, Kelly Goody, trying to work Colin the ball O'Neill. in and fist it over the fucking bar you know when they had outrageous kickers and they still do in, in Hurley and Sherlock and a few more like. so it's nice to see what did they kick and against Armagh 216 216 draw that like 216 quite a bit from phenomenal. against Armagh now again it's kind of a dead rubber so we, we kind of said you'd be lucky you could work in their favour playing Donegal and Armagh in the last game because they're both going to be true um, there was, there was but a still it's good scoring Flavour of a, a challenge match against a team you didn't want to lose to in that game. And there was a, a lot of lads getting minutes, Reen O'Neill, Aidan Nugent, that hadn't for Armagh for a while. So there was boys playing it. But I was talking to uh, one of the Armagh defenders after the game. I won't mention him, but he uh, he turned the ball over for one of the goals. He's had a brilliant league campaign, this fella. And uh, he was kicking himself. He was absolutely sick to the gut that he had made a mistake. And, uh, do you know, 
Uh, he's not. It's not going to be held against him. But uh, you could just see afterwards, like th- these lads aren't turning up to no matter what to throw a game, like mm. unlike. Oh, some, of course not. Some <laughs> um, did, did we see it in Teague? It seems you were there in person in Porky Creep, Super Valley Porky Creep. Mm. Uh, that Cork are <laughs> going to do it against Kerry in the Monster Championship. Probably not. No. Or is there any sort of? I think Cork have big results in them in the championship this year. I think last year that's as big as it gets for them. To go I'm Killarney, not sure they goals. have. It's on a Killarney. Killarney might, might be the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Porky Rin or Super Porky Valley Porky Rin. Rin. Super Valley Porky Rin. Little Porky Rin. It's only three quarters of a pitch. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not sure if they have it Logie yet. Pitch. I haven't seen enough. I would have thought in January I was talking them up a little bit, James. After what better than McGrath Cup? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, we don't put enough emphasis on the fucking McGrath Cup. <laughs> We're not getting into the structure chat now. <laughs> McGinney wants. Seven. That's too many games. McGinney wants seven home games and seven away games in the league. Oh, that's what he wants. He says, do away with the preseason competitions, get rid of the league final, and I don't know whether that means you're getting rid fourteen of the games. But that, that's even still even more. The, the preseason comps. I think that's what he wants. So he's one of the few Ulster coaches or Ulster. No, he never said talking about getting rid of the mechanic. No, no, no. He said mechanic cup, yeah, but he never said this is the Ulster championship. But I was trying to figure out in my head. I was like, there's no way. Well, you but but even but games. the mechanic cup is gold dust up there as well. Like. Yeah, I think everything is genuinely. Yeah. yeah, the thing is right, and I, I do agree with more games and everything, and I bet the players would like that. But as a spectacle, watching a game where it's do or die, have to win, the crowd's in it, versus one of 14 matches where the result yeah. doesn't really matter. Like, Dilute. as a spectacle, it, it, yeah. I think it would be hard to watch all those games, Possibly. you know, when when it's not really anything that serious on the line. I think football and hurling, they're just so much better because it's so all or nothing. Yeah. Jeopardy is key. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up with him again. He's definitely enthusiastic about that idea, but I'd absolutely take your point. The big story on Sunday, though, it was down to the wire in Division 4. And I don't know if you were following this. It was the early game. I was. I was. I was. One o'clock. Longford had it in their hands. The back-to-back of Burn Cup champions going out to the final but day. Longford, I thought they'd do a bit better now. They needed to beat Wexford in Wexford. Wexford, if they won... They needed Tipperary to do them a favour up in Park Sean McDermott and Carrick and Shannon against Leitrim. And all Leash needed was a draw against Waterford. Now, Leash went something like 4 8 to a point up after 20 minutes. Uh, I was surprised it took Leash to the final round to get up. You, you know, well, to be fair to them, Justin McNulty, they were the best team. So we thought they should have had it sewn up before the final we came. But anyway, I, th- I think they that's got the there madness. in the end the madness and the fine margins that are in Division 4 Leach only lost one game mm. the, they actually if they had held on against Leitrim would have been the only team to win all of their games across the league um, so it just shows you how tight those margins are Wexford did their job against Langford they bet them by 9 points 8-9 points but Leitrim held on and got promoted Paddy we work closely with Andy Moran here he's put in 3 hard years the luck has I gone against him he's brought them to the last day of the league on 3 occasions yeah. and finally they got the job done and in Carrick and Shannon at the weekend. No, it was great. Sent a little text yesterday. I was delighted for him. Um, tough going, Did obviously, you? on the back of losing to New York last year in the championship. That was a, was a tough situation for everyone involved there, no more so than, than the coach, but for not just Andy, but the players. Because like, a lot of those players have been through that as well, and they're the guys going out doing it. And for them to, I suppose the big thing, and a lot of, I've seen a lot of people talking about it yesterday, was the, the Wexford game, and obviously a, a pretty diabolical refereeing decision during that game which you know people are saying that's ultimately cost Wexford there's bad refereeing decisions in every game and I think yeah. over the course of seven games yes Wexford are, are going to be very disappointed not to get up but I think Leitrim you have to give massive credit to Andy and those players uh, to get up to get at the Crow Park against Leach this weekend what a game that will be for them and this, this is where the Crow Park team comes in and the same people ditch the league finals and this that new like Dublin and Derry is a, is a massive that they play in Crow Park. For those Leitrim players, for, for Leash, for the down of West Mid, well, more so down more West Mid might play Leicester Championship games there. But for guys to get games there, that's a massive thing. The massive, there'll be a huge crowd for both Leash and Leitrim in that game at the weekend. But for 
for Leitrim to get up and promote the Division 3. It's been three years in the, in the making. They've been close, but uh, it was great. Yeah. I have to say, you, I, was, hear, I was biased. I was delighted to get over the line yesterday. Did you hear Andy speaking after the game? About that? I didn't. I didn't. Someone said, that said it to me, quite enthusiastic, as is his style. We're, we're going to Division 3, and I heard a lot of noise during the week about killing the league finals. They can kill them all they want for Divisions 1 and 2, but they <laughs> ah! won't be killing them for <laughs> Divisions 3 and 4. Park Sean at the end of the game was amazing. It was emotional. He agrees. Lee Trump, he agrees, yeah. Leitrim is a football-mad county, and to bring them people to Crow Park, well, it's going to be an amazing day. Yeah. The week is going to be green and yellow around Carrick and Shannon and all the towns around Leitrim. Dead. That is classic. It, it, yeah. you know, that is yeah. nice. James, yeah. can I ask you about this, right? Because I was listening to the interview that Dave Hooper and Shannon Side did with Andy on the field after the game as well. And he revealed there was a predicament on the sideline, Andy, at halftime. Oh. And the experience of having Mickey Graham on board was a big help here, right? So Mickey Graham's in their backroom team. Wexford were Coach. winning by 10 points at halftime, okay? Leitrim scored a late free through Dara Rooney to take the lead against Longford. Longford had pulled it back. Uh, Cratlow man Shane Neville had scored a point to equalise it at 6-6 going into half time what happens do you think at half time do you think that you tell the lads that Wexford are hammering Longford down the country in the game that you need no. Wexford to win yeah I'd well they not. did they said he went in and said that that result is done is it they, they were like lads yeah Wexford are doing what we need them to do it's up to you now to go out and get the job done okay yeah, what, I suppose. What way? Did, you, did you ever experience that? I'd probably not want to hear the result at all or the score at all. I would think you not? that personally, I wouldn't. I think it would just, yeah, it would just distract me a tiny bit. I'd be even if it if it cost me a couple of minutes thinking about another game, I'd be pissed off myself. I'd want to keep my even focus on, on my own game. Could you avoid it even if it's directly? But I'd, I'd, I'd no have control over. You'd have you have no control. Yeah, I'd I'd have it in my head anyway that that was going to happen. It's all down to us. Like that, we'll look after stuff. It's yeah. all down to what we do. Because if you let that in at all, I yeah. like for yeah, me personally, that's just me it, myself. I, I would rather not know. I'd rather just have it all and yeah. all the focus on our game. I'm just thinking of the sky cameras back in 2011 12, cutting from Rooney to QPR. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watching it. But no, as, as players, I don't, I don't think we were ever in that situation. Groups, the Super Eights, everything else. We were once. You just, we had to beat. We had to beat Kildare, wasn't it? We had to beat Kildare at home, and we needed Galway to beat. Monaghan. Galway, Galway duffed it, yeah. Galway could have like, beat him. Yeah. And Galway would have avoided Dublin in the semi-final. They'd have been in our own final <laughs> if they won, <laughs> and they didn't. And we didn't know either, so we went in at half time. We weren't playing great, and I remember we were by hundred points. They just not. Know. We did because at half time we said, "What the fuck are we doing? Like, let's get our act together." And no one mentioned the other result. I think that. That result could have almost been done as well at half time. No, but, no. Wasn't it? Half half time. Won comfortably enough though, did they? Half time. In the end. Fourth of August twenty eighteen. Kerry Kildare, go away Monaghan. Yeah. Half time in Kerry Kildare. Kildare beat me by four points in Fitzgerald Stadium. Kildare were winning. Yeah. What? Kildare were winning. At half time. Yeah. According to my source. And at half time in Galway Monaghan, Monaghan were beating Galway by seven points to five. Jesus. I remember All right, so we went in half time. We were playing. And we, we, said, we were playing. We ended up playing Galway. Yeah, yeah. We went in half time, and we went like, "What are you at? Like, this is a home championship match. Your own supporters look at the the cut of the place. Like, it was unreal. The noise and everything in the first half, and then we turned out that that rubbish, and then we just turned it on second half. But then I remember we scored a goal at one stage. No, none of us knew the score. <laughs> we scored a goal. <laughs> And there was just silence, like because everyone, <laughs> everyone in the stand it felt knew. They were fairly lively then. Yeah. You scored. That's, you, came that's on, a, you, you came on at half time that day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jimmy, you turned it around. You this turned, I didn't want to say like, like but you, you scored the goal. You I, scored the goal. I didn't. Boy. No, that was. What are we dealing with? Edited. <laughs> this is a disgrace. <laughs> and then I came on and we won by a hundred points. You just have it in for Kildare. This is another more Kildare bash. No, I think okay. they got it. They got a man sent off, but we didn't know until. We scored a goal late on, and there was, was honestly it was like yeah. just silence. Yeah. And then silence. Was like, oh. Okay, God, that's interesting. All right, uh, we'll have a close eye on divisions three and four this Saturday night. Next week on the pod, we're going to pick our football pod team of the league from division three and four, a combined fifteen. 
This week, yeah. we're going to pick our Division 1 and 2 combined team. I'm just going to rattle off what happened in Division 3 because on Saturday night, we've got down in Westmead in the league final. It's probably what we expected from the outset of the league. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So down, we're in a shootout with Clare. Clare brought them down to the last day. Again, you talk about refereeing decisions. Clare will look back on the goal that was disallowed against Westmead in the last minute. And I think it's a little different when it's direct. The way that Wexford's head to head was lost to Leitrim by a score in the last minute, and Clare lost out to Westmead. It's, it's it's like a direct influence of one decision, but these decisions happen. Players make mistakes, umpires make mistakes, referees make, make mistakes. loads of mistakes, journalists make mistakes, and ex players turned pundits make mistakes too. No, we don't. So says who? McGee. Um, so <laughs> Limerick, <laughs> Limerick actually put in one of the best performances of the season. Uh, they lost by a point to Offaly. They're down, and Wicklow are also down. And Trump bet them at the weekend so that is that is it from the leagues and lads before we wrap up this week's pod which is brought to you as always by AIB proud sponsors of the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship check out hashtag the toughest for more and the championship is just around the corner this is our team of the league and now we have put our heads together for the last week we've been whatsapping back and forth <laughs> arguing it's the first I've heard of it <laughs> Is this a communal team? <laughs> well, I've also allowed a spot for the Football Pod listeners to make their case for players too. So, oh, an A and other. There's an A and other. There, well, there's a bit of room here, a bit of wriggle room, and, and we'll, we'll go with what our audience are saying on Instagram too for one, maybe one or two spots that are up for debate. So we've kind of put suggestions into our group. So I'm going to rattle through some of the contenders before we pick the actual team. So I'm going to give a couple of honourable mentions here. Is that okay? So this is... Of the four divisions, or no, just one and just two. The one and we'll do two. three and four next week after yeah. the final. Yes, there's a couple of slam dunks in here, obviously, mm. which are we'll all be in agreement on. Can we come are back you... to the slam dunks? Yeah, I'm just trying to take me. Yeah, okay, yeah, but keep them in your back pocket because if I make I have, a mistake to, I have here, them in my back pocket. Yeah, James, if I, I make if I miss one, any shouts here, I'm two, given a couple of shout outs three, from each four, county. Five. So if you think of anyone here that I'm missing, I've six slam dunks. That's okay. That's good. I think I think I think we had six or seven slam dunks. Oh, seven, seven. Sorry, seven, seven slam dunks. So I'm going to give you the contenders from Division Two who are in the mix, players who had very good leagues and who stood out. I would have covered a few of these games. You boys have been watching them closely. Yeah. We're going to start with the bottom. And Kildare. Kevin Feely <laughs> is a player who stood up in every game they had. Kick marks, caught balls. The only player that I can say. <laughs> Jimmy's going to explode show. there. Jimmy's <laughs> face is going to explode. No, I, we can't put a Kildare Feely, player in the one team, of my favourite players, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a Kildare player in the... No, he won't he make it. He won't make it. I'm just giving the Red Getter teams their kind of kudos. And, and okay. From, from Mana, Gavin Jones won seven at the weekend from play in a game they needed to win. A leader in the full forward line. And Sean Cassidy beside him was brilliant throughout the league. From Mana picked up three points from four in the first two games and Cassidy was brilliant. He went down, isn't it, like... Mm. So they're, they're, that's mm. their shout. They were tight. From Mead, who finished sixth, I'm going to mention two players. Paddy, your buddy Donald Kogan, man of the match yeah. in three games for Mead in the league. Essential to a very young team staying up this year. Critical, yeah. Costly. And their full back, Adam O'Neill. Keep an eye on this fella this year. I think he's had one of the best league campaigns for any full back in the country. Oh, wow. I'm not going to push him into this team because there's been a lot of good players in the full back line. But Adam O'Neill has been brilliant for me and keep an eye on them in the championship. For Loud, they've had a couple of players that have had very good league campaigns, but one fella that stood out to me and he was brilliant on Saturday night was Ryan Burns. They yeah, needed players right, to yeah. stand up alongside Mulroy and get scores and Burns, he was a prodigy lad, this guy underage. I would have known him uh, from a, a club not far from mine and it's kind of taken him a while to kind of grow into himself but he's... he's There's a lot of good stuff there. happening in Loud to be fair. Yeah, mm. there is. From Cavan, Paddy Lynch is the yeah. player who's getting a shout and he's in the mix for this team. Paddy Lynch is a top player. From Cork, James. Uh, the players I've given a shout to here. James. J- Jimmy's named off of ten of these. You've ten <laughs> slam dunks from Cork. Chris Oak Jones. Savage <laughs> season. Chris Oak Jones has been very good, right? And Oak jo- Chris Oak Jones. And we need Cork. to get Chris Oak Jones on the show, lads. Jimmy, oh. do a one-to-one interview. <laughs> the mind David Clifford in Reedies. We need to get down and meet Chris Oak Jones. Oh, yeah. He did coach. have a very, very good season. Not, I expected a few more goals, but still a good season. Go on there, Tom. Himself and Corbett, right? They, they've dovetailed really nicely. Mm. Corbett hasn't played the whole league, but they've been very, very impressive. 
for me, Cork's best footballer has been Colin McCallaghan, and I'll come back to him in a few minutes. Midfield, midfield, yeah, yeah, and he's one of these players that's added scores to his repertoire. Now, the top two, they have a fair few contenders. Arma, I asked McGinney about him the other night. Oshin Connery, this fella is electric. He was playing uh, Irish soccer league with Porta Down. I think there was a a bit of a couple of clubs in the UK looking at him over the last across the years. water, across the water. And they've snared him in Armagh. They've got him on board for the Gaelic football season. And uh, he's been very, very impressive. Conor Turbert's been exceptional. Turbert's a little further back. Armagh back. conceded their first two goals of the league lads this year against Cork. So Greg McCabe, Peter McGrain, and their goalkeeper Blaine Hughes deserves a shout who stood in for Ethan Rafferty. And then from Donegal's perspective, Pat Mogan, Keelan McGonagall, yeah. Kieran Thompson, Darrow Boyle, Ushin Gallon, McBurty. Very good league campaigns. Morgan was one of my slam dogs. I think that's fair. James, anyone key, missing they, there from their the style team. of play? He's like he's like a Roy McHugh esque version of it. Scores Lethal. all action. Yeah, he's had Lethal. a top Lethal. campaign. I think okay. you've nailed it there, Tom. Okay, so there. I just wanted to try out some of those. So, so you're not putting any of these up. guys in. These are just honourable mentions. A few because oh, I want Morgan in the team. Be in. Yeah, a few of them. Will be okay, in. So okay. I think I think we'll go now and we'll go through the team. And if I miss anyone from Division One mentions, we'll we'll throw them out there. All right. Pick the goalkeeper on three, all of us together. Okay. One, two, Morgan. Shane Ryan. I thought we were going to <laughs> <two>, three. <laughs> no, it's Morgan yeah. altogether. Yeah. No, Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. In That's fairness, though, Reap has been good. Mm -hmm. His kicking, his freeze, and everything have been outstanding, but not not at the level of Morgan and Ferris, who's been yeah. reckless. Morgan can do everything. Nine Morgan, goalkeeper on the football pod team of the league. Cornerbacks slash full back line. We're not going to go on three this time, but we've got Connor McCluskey nailed on. Yeah, Glad goal up. scoring cornerback. Yeah. He's been unbelievable. Doing as good defensively as he has been going forward, and yeah. that's saying something. Alongside him, lads, I put Dermot Baker, the young Derry fella that has broken oh, through this year. Um, One of the, the new players that Derry have got that Mickey Hart has given a chance that he's played every single minute for Derry and he's been brilliant back there. And I've also gone for Johnny McGrath on our team. This is kind of a mix mash of all our notes that have gone together. So Johnny yeah. McGrath from Galway. Well, he's done the man marking jobs. He's done the big man marking jobs. And like I said, Galway have had a tough league, you yes. know, without the... Established. I know Conroy was back the, the latter games, but, but throughout the league, he was picking up the main men. Galway were under pressure. That's a, uh, there hasn't been many pluses, I would say, for power of choice from this league campaign, but that's definitely one of them. Yeah. John Merchant, Daly Merchant, Galway. John Daly's a great player, yeah. yeah. Merchant got a few a few difficult um, I, I, I assignments and did well. Um, so, so where do you think I, we fitted Merchant in here, James? Six. Did you fit Merchant in? Six, is that okay? Yeah, Murch has um, played in the half back line. Bar, obviously, you know the, the Clifford probably the most high profile uh, matchup he had. In the he was on McGuigan as well, wasn't he? Mm. I, I think Murch has been Dublin's best back in the National League. I think Brian Howard has been beautiful the last couple yeah. of games. Getting him back in, that's another plus. But I think over the course of the National League, I think Murch has been brilliant for Dublin. Yeah, yeah. So come in six there, and your other slam dunk. Paddy and our first player from Division 2 in this combined team is Pat Mogan from Mogan, Donegal. Yeah, definitely. He's been absolutely brilliant. Where has he actually been lining up? Because so, he yeah. plays so far forward. Yeah. Is he... This and is he's like named the, old, the cornerback remember, a couple of times. Remember we were talking about Tyrone and the transition players. Yeah. Donegal are playing this like uh, total football. Mm -hmm. Renus Mikkels. A load of midfielders. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Cruyff. Renus Mikkels, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah there. Attack and, he is and defend everywhere. in yeah. waves. Yeah. Great to watch. And oh, I like watching it. Yeah. I might get a bit of stick from this, and I'm going to leave this position open because we might be coming back to it. But I've stuck a player five in the final defensive position. Go on. Similar to Mogan, hasn't played a lot of football there. Darrow Boyle, another Donegal player who's been oh, exceptional. Know, he's played wing back, half back, he's played corner Boyle, forward. Boyle back. He's Who else is in the mix? Where he's been bread and butter. Who else has been in the mix? Like? Some of the players in the mix you could say would be uh, was was Graham O'Sullivan from Kerry. Has he had a good enough league to be in the mix? Gavin he White did have a good league. Minute. Gavin White's been good, played all the games. Yeah, um, I yeah. think Greg McCabe from Armagh has been superb. Mm. I was kind of happy to go for a wheel, given what he's done going forward. And those Donegal positions are so interchangeable. Yeah, it's like the middle eight, isn't it? Mm. So 
that's that. Midfield. We have one slam dunk in Brian Fenton. Yeah. Now, James, argue with me on this if you want. But I yeah. haven't gone for a Kerry footballer here, even though Joe O'Connor has had a brilliant league. Joe O'Connor has a good league. He had a tough time against Fenton and Crokery in that first half in particular. Um, he's he been did. a good find, which Kerry need to find, obviously. He, he's learning, coming back from a cruciate, learning the role, played all the games, scored goals, got a few points, physical fitness improving every every game and got man the match last day out. I thought he was atle- worth, definitely worth a, a mention. That athleticism is something for Croker. Because I thought that was one of the glaring things from that bad night for, for Kerry against Dublin. Like I said, the middle third they were right. Jack O'Connor alluded to it after. I know he actually scores a goal in the second half, but that athleticism in Crow Park is essential if you're playing in midfield. Um, so, look, they're obviously working towards that. But no, I, th- I think he's had a positive league campaign. I don't know if I'd have him in this team, though, T. Okay. Uh, other contenders for midfield would be the likes of Connor Glass and Rogers, who I think have had very, very, very strong league campaigns. Yeah. Steady, steady without steady. being of their incredibly high been. standards just yet. Yeah. I've gone for Conor McCallaghan, the aforementioned Cork midfielder, who I think has brought a lot to his game this year. He obviously had that spectacular catch against Kildare. He kicked three yeah, points for the goal, yeah. against Armagh. He's kicked eight, nine points from play across the league. Um, I just like what I've seen with him. I've liked how he's developed his game. And uh, I like the fact that we've got a couple of Division Two players in there. So I've gone for Colin McCallaghan. You can Ender Smith. I thought no, that's yes. kind of in between centre forward and midfield for the Rossies. I was at two of the Ross Common games live, and I thought he was probably their best player in both of them, which is no surprise. Um, I really yeah, like Ender Smith. I every time I see him, he just so dangerous. He's a handful, isn't he? He's he'd, so he'd play direct. In a, he'd play in a lot of teams. He would. He would play in a lot of teams. He's so direct. I think that if he had the he's, runners off him that Dublin guy, have. He, he, like he always beats his man and he's through on goal. Mm. If if yeah. there was a, another option, just a fella coming through to slip it to sometimes to have the shot. Sometimes he kind of takes a shot off balance because he doesn't have any other options. Mm. He's, so but he's so dangerous. Mm. He's, he's a very good player. player. He's yeah. a top player. Some player. Okay, go on. Callahan and Fenton then. Yep. All right, let's stick with that. Okay, uh, half forward line. There's a bit of jiggery pokery going on here because some of the forwards have been absolutely One, unbelievable. Two. I four that I'm like. Give me your bankers. Give me your slam dunks. Derek Canavan, I think, is the player of the league. Mm-hmm. Canavan McGuigan. Kill Kenny. Yeah. Kill Kenny. McGuigan. Khan has had a good, a good league. Yeah. All four are in our team, lad, our combined teams. What about a Division 2? I've won from Armagh. And Armagh, I think they're top of the pops. Mm. They haven't got much of a look in here. Connor Turbot for me. Yeah, I took, I took Turbot 12. He's been wearing 13. Have Turbot in. Ah, have Turbot excellent. 12. Yeah. This like the All Stars. You, you could uh, get a jersey anywhere here. <laughs> I to wing back. Well, Turbot's wing Turbot back. in goals uh, because he can kick the freeze when he comes up. <laughs> yeah, we should shame McGregor there, full back. Yeah, he's attacking from full back. We're just going. We're no, just but going with Turbot, like this forwards. is the thing with, with, with our man and you know, the challenge to McGeaney. Like, you know, you've Reen O'Neill, obviously, an outstanding player, but you need more showbiz up there. And Turbot's kind of looking in the face. and they took him out of the team in a couple of the games, a couple of the later games last year where he was yeah, through the Ulster Championship. He was playing, he was kicking the freeze, he's kicking scores. Mm. He's got, oh, he's got magic, that guy. He, he's got serious potential. He could have a massive summer for them. So, I, again, what, two, two live games and then highlights, seeing him through the league. Yeah. Very, oh. very, very impressed. Lethal. Looking Lethal. forward to seeing him this Saturday, so, this Sunday as well. I've gone for Kilkenny 10, who's had a, Brilliant league campaign so far. McGuigan eleven. I know he plays thirteen, but I'm putting him eleven. I think he can play. Plays fourteen. We're playing. We're this picking four. All star stuff. Go so on. Who are you picking fourteen? Then are you picking oh, Connor? No, 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 are you picking no, no, McGuigan? No, no. Who's going fourteen? Derek Adam. Well, Derek Adam has gone fifteen. Fourteen. Johnny Turbot's Heaney. Gone twelve. Twelve. Who's gone okay, twelve? We Johnny, Johnny Heaney, Heaney was, was was I think had a really good league and he had to. He did have a good. And league. He was good yesterday against Kerry, even though. They're under pressure again. Adding scores to his game. I like that. And outside the right. A do her her score he has in the locker. Yeah. I want to see Johnny Heaney do that when McGuigan, er, not McGuigan, when Walsh and Comer are back in the team. Another shooter. Because he's shown he has it in the locker. He absolutely does. Another shooter from the West in the half forward line that had a mention. Right, I don't know. 
Oh, Fergal. Fergal Ball. Yeah. Loved an outs- a lot of outside of the rights. Yeah. Beautiful to watch. That's he was a <laughs> big find for Mayo because they were sh- yeah. they, they needed someone like that to come in and and have a bit of class out there and kick a few points from long range. He, he had a good league. He, for, from being he, off the panel to come in and play yeah. and do so well, that's a good story as well. I'd say, uh, personal level, he'd be delighted with that league. Mm. I, I, I don't have him in the top team of the league, but from Mayo's perspective, and just for him himself to... Been there before, you know, they're dropped. It's not happening for you. You get a chance and talk about taking it. He's been a he's been a plus for Mayo, definitely for Kevin McStay. Yeah, absolutely. And another mention around that, Ryan O'Donoghue, who you mentioned him very good league campaign. Yeah. I thought from Monaghan, and I know they had a great start. I thought Michal Bannigan in any game I watched this year from Monaghan was exceptional. Good player. Yeah, really yeah. good. Oh, pace, 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 one pace. Or two. Yeah, he made that yeah. dramatic Stephen Hanlon goal early in the league. Two of the dubs, Scully and McGarry had good league campaigns. But we can't pick a full team of dubs. So Yeah, no, good, but we wouldn't have them in this team. Yeah. The six forwards, Kieran Kilkenny, Shane McGuigan, Connor Turbot, Connor Callahan, Dara Canavan, and number thirteen, I've given it to Calvin's Paddy Lynch, because by my count, he's the top scorer in the National Football League mm. across the board. And uh topped it off at the weekend with a brilliant goal. So are we arguing with Anton there? Are we sticking with that? Um that well, you said you were going to leave a couple of positions up to the, to the listeners, and then you just absolutely shot out. <laughs> well, <laughs> how many how many Division Two players do we have? Four, five Division Two players. So the listeners, some of the comments from the listeners, and yeah, we'll okay. wrap it up on this, right? Um, I know the, the, the listener, the Kevin thing. Biased. You know that yeah. you you have to get a, a couple of Kevin in one minimum <laughs> because of the, the barrage of abuse you took last year. You'll be year. barred from the boar's head <laughs> if you don't put at least one Kevin man in. I used to go to the boar's head on Friday. We're doing a thing, so I, I'm glad you put Paddy Lynch in. No, you, he does I agree. Again. Paddy Lynch is in. Yeah, yeah I think the will be happy. I just read out a couple of comments. Sean McMullen, Ushin Connery deserves a mention. He scored in every round. He may not get in with the names that you boys are going to have in the full forward line, though, which is fair. Even though we talked about Tyrone's ceiling and their bottom, uh, a lot of people have suggested Nine Morgan and Derek Canavan, so I think that's fair. From the bowling, has got a lot of shouts. Shit. Some of the bankers, Dermot Baker, Conor McGlusky, Johnny Heaney, load of shouts. Um, there was a good one here as well. Uh, I'll find it in a second. Don Kyogen got a few yeah. mentions. A couple of me people, obviously, in the comments. Ocean Connery has got a fair few mentions, so there's a couple of... Paddy Clifford got a few mentions, James. Did he have a good enough league to be mentioned here? He did. He did. But I suppose they didn't come back for the first one or two. And he was rested for the last game. But in between, he ran the show against Roscommon. Played a couple of very good league games, to be fair to him. Um, he's a leader. I, w- leader. I would have thought Shawnee Shea overall was probably Kerry's best forward in the league. I think Kerry's best player in the league. He yeah. played every minute. Yeah. Showed good leadership. Yeah. He's kicking a little bit off the last couple of games. He'll be he'll be able to work on that. Usually his kicking is hundred or hundred. I wouldn't, be, about shot, no. shot, I wouldn't yeah. be worried about shot. So that's uh, that's the only thing I suppose. When you are this is the thing when you are working that hard. He's such a team player, Shawnee, like a frighteningly honest player. He would go back. He'd chase the cornerback up yeah, the, yeah. up and down the field as many times as he had to. But it does affect your kicking. Then, like you need to be, yeah. you can't have heavy sure. legs kicking or. You need to almost try and save save your energy for your pass him on, kicking, pass him on to the fucking half backs or something. You take yeah. him and stay up. As the year goes Keep on, fresh. it'll be it'll be getting fitter and the kicking will be straight over black spot again. But definitely Kerry's best player, I think, during the league. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Do we put a Kerry player in the league, team of the league, or do we leave it as it is? Because there's no Kerry player. Oh, no, we'd we'll leave it as is. Okay, uh, Killian yeah. Lavelle, very good, even though man and a relegated. Yeah. Cameron Baker, a few shots. Young Peter McGrain from our man, another breakthrough player from our man, and cornerbacks got a goal at the weekend. Jared Carney says, "Just put the whole Dublin team in there, Tommy. Is that's who Paddy would pick, anyways?" <laughs> Delighted. Yeah. Never he's, get he's a fair dubs. comment out of Paddy. He's obsessed with the dubs. <laughs> not having that, not Paddy. No, he's not happy. No. No, Any other the Dublin players deserve a mention, Paddy, from the players we've mentioned? All of them. 30, 33. <laughs> Sem, semi Garo's number. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that is the football pod, team of the league. A lot of players there got mentions. A lot of players with good individual campaigns. A few teams that will be disappointed with how they got on, but some players have stood up. Paddy James, that is this week's football pod. Are we books. doing predictions for the league final before we go? We might We're as well. Do that on our members pod. Oh, tune in. So. 
This is the benefit of having two pods a week. Yeah, two. Benefits of having two pods a week. I have my teams that I think will win. So. I might, do, I might throw a header on this. Mm. Okay, Jimmy, gonna, you're you're the man for the bets, Jimmy. We're not advocating betting. Jimmy, WhatsApp. Yeah, sorry, no, no gambling. That's for but the. Jimmy, it's okay once you what? say gamble responsibly. Uh, after <laughs> after you okay. gave an outrageous tip. straight in, straight into <laughs> WhatsApp here. Give me your predictions for the weekend. Okay, we'll do that now, and we'll be catching up for our members spot a little later in the week. To everybody at home, thanks for tuning in across the league campaign and sticking with us. We've got lots of exciting things planned for the championship. We'll let you know about all that over the next little while Paddy and James great to catch up we'll be back chatting tomorrow maybe lunchtime is when we're hoping to get the member spot yeah. done so we'll uh, we'll catch up then thanks boys cheers Tom good luck class see you boys top class top class <laughs>